This video is brought to you by Astapro. More on them after the reaction, peeps. Citizens of the Reject Nation, we are here today to watch Fallout Episode 7, rejoined by Michael Tesla, our Fallout expert. Michael, how are you doing today? I'm doing fan tastic How are you doing, Gregory? Stendipulous. Thank you, Michael. Fantastic. Okay, guys, well, you know what to do here. First, tell us your thoughts on Episode 7 down below. Also, leave a like, thumbs that video up. Be sure to subscribe, click that notification bell, because we got one more episode left to go. One left to go! <laughs> I really don't want this to end. Neither do I. Then we're not going to hang out anymore. It's going to be a problem. <laughs> Are you going to play the games? Thank you to Prepper for helping set down these highlights. <laughs> Thanks to all of you who have joined us at our Patreon page. That's where you get the full length reaction watch along where you sync up with your own copy of Fallout. And uh, we cover several things over there exclusively with highlights of watch alongs included. All right, chums, let's begin. Hmm. Metal detector? Nope. Nope. Just sweeping. Sand sifting. No, no mine detecting. <gasps> New California Republic armor! I'm just as excited. And the Fallout theme. It's an NCR Ranger. Oh, this is very, very exciting, Greg. I appreciate that they've reserved the Fallout theme for the NCR. Is that Eric Estrada? Kind of looks like him. Sandra! A better look. Sandra? Oh no. What did you do to Sandra? Sandra? Oh, please don't be eating Sandra. No, no, no. You didn't have time to cook Sandra. Whew. Thank you, darling. What a great way to toy with him. He just stayed quiet. Oh, wait. You thought. <laughs> That's a fair <laughs> assumption in this world. That's a, what a great way to toy with him. He didn't even do anything. He <laughs> just sat there and ate. And cool prejudice is real. Lead farmer, huh? I probably still got some of your lead in me somewhere. <laughs> See, am I out of date? Or did I hear you had three kids? Three kids? I had an oldest son, but he's gone. This guy's teeth are really white. I took up with that mad woman in the hills two years ago. We haven't heard from him since. Mad woman in the hills? Mm. Mm, particular lady with a fire cult? Mm -hmm. There's always some new little faction out there. <laughs> Brand new team of believers with their own dumbass ideas about how they're going to save the world. Oh, uh, well, that's how you make video games. <laughs> what did you say the name of your eldest was? Was it Rufus? What did you do? What is that envelope? Well, you see, Daddy O. Now, from what I can tell. Oh, he's been writing letters. Oh, Rufus got Tommy and mixed up with that mad woman, too. Oh, no. Oh, no. Rufus sent Tommy a stash of caps to pay a courier for the safe transport of an enclave defector. Oh, wow. To that very same mad woman in the hills, Moldaver. Okay. But my problem is, by the time I got this letter off your brother, it was a little bit hard to read. <laughs> oh, boy. Now you give me that location, and I'll be on my way. That's a fair trade. I didn't want to spend my life digging through dirt. I want to build something, and we have the chance. Tell him what he wants to know, or else he's going to kill us all. Including your little sister. Uh, I hate cults. <sighs> depends. Nope. <laughs> hate them all, Greg. De depends. She's she's at the observatory. Oh. The Griffith Observatory? So what you think, Tommy? Am I really walking out of here today, or are you going to try and draw on me for what I did to your big brother? Don't try. You won't. Maybe not today, but maybe someday. Oh man, I hope the ghoul's just toying. Dude, Tommy. <sighs> I don't even know these people and I care about them. That's tough. Wow, he lost both his kids. It's literally like the plot of the Patriot. <laughs> In a sense, yeah. Did that he just unlock West. Mel Gibson? That was a classic <laughs> Western shot right there. At least he left the dad and the daughter. We were told America's always getting better. It's always moving toward a better future. But the future is getting closer, and we can see it. All right, a little too close to home. This is poignant. Than we do with the people here in power, the real enemy. That's about all the horseshit I can take. Whoa. Mr. Howard? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. 
I said that uh, this is about all the horse shit I can take. <laughs> I have my principles, Miss Williams. That's all. Uh-huh. And those principles of yours, how much did vault Tech pay to take them off your hands? Ooh. vault Tech is the largest company in America. There's a lot of money in selling the end of the world. He was doing just fine without it, though. I'm sure there's a lot of money in selling a political ideology that ends in bread line. Sorry, this was a mistake. We'll be leaving. No, no, no. This is a good debate. You see, it happens that I know your wife, and perhaps a side of her you don't. Uh-oh. Having this conversation from everyone, huh? Better hope he doesn't have a gun to sling on you. How do you know my wife? My research company was acquired by her division. We were developing this kind of technology that's difficult to monetize. My favorite kind. That's what I was on the verge of achieving when Vault Tech swept in and bought up every company I'd ever worked for. What, millionaire communist. Hypocrisy is like violence in your movies. If you only <laughs> let the bad guys use it, the bad guys win. <laughs> America has been locked in a resource war. Vault Tech mm. bought the means to end that war all because it didn't fit into their business model i want your help in getting it back wow it started off as a partnership it's a listening device you want me to spy on my wife <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i do met you five minutes ago i'm not a communist mr howard that's just a dirty word they use to describe people who aren't insane yeah that's why people call me a communist I'm so curious in like the current political climate of today, how audiences are going to navigate just talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you put it in a different era. It makes yeah. it easier. No, for real. Ooh. Blah, 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 blah. God, I freaking love this show. Saw what you were doing to those poor women. It's sick. She needs to see the holotape. <sighs> All right. It's like a theme park, right? <laughs> Your history. Your history. Despite our results here, I want to reiterate that a society governed by scientists Honey! is the ideal social structure. Oh, that's the couple from the from yeah. the back then. Should not be used as a case study for what happens when scientists are given unregulated control. <laughs> Love how Funhouse this feels. Our test subjects were less compliant than we expected. Whoa, creature feature. Ah, the start. I don't understand. I, I saw your doctors trying to ease the pain of the poor souls. Your people lured into this place. His ancestors were used as lab rats by the original residents of Vault 4. Mm. Creature in the video was actually my great uncle Peter on my mom's side. Whoa. You have infected our home with violence and now you must pay the price. Oh, so 4 maybe isn't as bad as, I don't know. This is a conversation to be had. That's so interesting. That took a really unexpected turn. Yeah. Where oh, tough choice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, Red Rocket. An essential location in Fallout. Oh. Are you done? Okay, okay. I love the usage of this dog. Hopping from player to player. Oh, oh Jesus, Mary and Joseph. <laughs> when did that happen? When uh when he was in the power armor and they stepped on him? Oh yeah. Okay, I gotta reevaluate here. What do I need? What do I need? I can't believe he gets some solo time. This too, huh? Everybody oh, wow. wants this. Guess what's mine? <laughs> You think everything's for you. It's pretty selfish, actually. You know that? Why would you want to bite? Oh, my God. If he takes the head. <laughs> <laughs> can't eat this. You don't look like you're in that much pain. I'm sure he's on some drugs. A lot of space. You're a loose cannon, all right? This is a very important mission. I can't have you jeopardize. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, this guy is on my shit list now. That is so cruel. All right. Got a radio tower to fly. Hood, oh, I want this guy to get ripped to pieces now. We are all survivors here. It doesn't matter where you come from or what you believe. They're popcorn buckets. This is entertainment for them. Unless you threaten that piece. She wasn't aware that. Well. Oh. For causing harm to a fellow survivor, you are hereby sentenced to death. <laughs> By banishment to the surface! 
Oh, I love Fallout. <laughs> You're just letting me go? Nah, don't question it. Just go. Certainly an optimistic perspective. You'll be killed almost immediately on the surface by Lord knows what. That's why we're giving you two weeks of supplies to take with you. <laughs> After that, you're on your own, Goosey. Goosey. <laughs> Can I just ask you one thing? Obviously, someone will carry the supplies to the surface for you. <laughs> My friend really likes it here, and he's a good person. He deserves to be somewhere nice and safe. Oh, Lucy, you're such a good person. I know that I'm... <laughs> oh, boy, still in the He's gonna cause court. some shit, though. He's about to cause some shit. Can he stay? Oh, no. <laughs> He's just trying his best. Only oh. No, Maximus! <laughs> Can do seem right. No! Oh, man! Only you oh, God. Make the Not the popcorn! Oh. What are you doing? Oh, no! no. Stop! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Oh, God. They're letting me go. Really? Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Somebody maybe check on him. <laughs> oh, no. Bunch of misfits. Oh, they didn't get to take their snacks. What? We stole their fusion core. You know, I needed it for the armor. Well, without their fusion core, their auxiliary power will only last a few days. And it's not the right thing. No. Yes. No. Giving it back is the right thing to do. It is. Without the fusion core, this armor is useless. I can't be a knight. If you're nothing without the suit. Yeah, but I can help people with this armor. You can help people without it. You really want to give them their fusion core back if it means you don't get your dad? Oh yeah, that mission. My dad found out that I destroyed an entire mm. community to save him. It's not worth it. Break his heart. Perspectives are so skewered here. A lot of subjective takes in this show. I like it. I really thought like four was like fucking evil. <laughs> well, it's fun because there's so many moral decisions to be yeah, made yeah. in Fallout. And just to like watch all the characters make all those choices for you. That's fun. I hope they give her the food. Oh, they didn't even make a big deal out of it. They just dropped it off. <laughs> Thinking about those oysters. Mm. Mm. Say goodbye to bliss, paradise, and say goodbye to a soup. Fix the world, Greg. We can have caviar again. Radioactive caviar. I was supposed to marry a stranger from another vault. She's getting very vulnerable with him. It didn't turn out so good. I don't have the best luck when it comes to strangers. Titus, I can honestly say you are the best stranger that I've ever met. Oh. He hasn't been completely honest, though. When all of this is over, you could come and live with us in Vault 33 with me. Aww. Well, there's something I should tell you. Yep, you gotta be more it. honest. My name isn't Titus, Titus, it's Maximus. There we go. Titus is the name of the knight who owned this suit before me. He was threatening me, so instead of helping him, I watched him die, and I took his armor, and I lied to you. So all that stuff you're saying you know, about, uh, about me being a good person. I'm so proud of him. You still are a good person. I just threw acid in an innocent man's face. <laughs> <laughs> the wasteland sucks. Yeah, sometimes. Do you want to come live with me in my vault? <laughs> oh, it's a really cute pickup line. Yeah. Also a really creepy one. <laughs> Is Maximus going to die? Absolutely. <laughs> I have very little faith. We're going to make it to a happy ending here. <laughs> yeah. Penultimate, so I'm a little concerned with this too happy of a moment. And he's not armored, but stripping away the armor allowed him to reveal his true self. Mm. Broadcasting from the base of the once beautiful Hollywood Hill. Hey, so weird. I like live there. Like not in the hills. A couple blocks down. Getting in my small but mighty collection of fiddle tunes. Ah, he's sand walking. If you don't like what you hear, just a reminder that I don't take visitors at the station. Enjoy the fiddle. 
Dude, his foot must just be falling apart. It's so gross. Yeah. The use of music from the Fallout games is so freaking fun. I uh, just want to punch him so badly. I'm sure he's a lovely guy in real life. Oh, is that the guy who was eating the chicken? Doing the, not eating, but you know what I mean. Doing stuff with the chickens? Mmm, he looks a little different, but it might be. I'm a doctor, I can help you. Yes, <laughs> I believe it is. I haven't run into many people traveling with a uh, human head. Yes, it absolutely is. <laughs> Welcome to my humble pharmacy. Have a seat, my dear uh, boy. Let's this is going to end great. <laughs> Ooh. Someone stepped on my foot. Sometimes fatal. But you're in luck, because <laughs> I've got the cure. <laughs> I've... Serums and potions for every malady and misfortune that could possibly be said. What a crook. Well, when it comes to serums, not many people know the difference between the noxious and the benign. A murky hue of green could aid the humors, a brackish hint of shamrock, and... Get some tumors. Uh -huh. That's the sound of your lower intestine falling <laughs> right the f*** out. Uh -huh. <laughs> which is which? Fine, just give me the right one. Okay. But for what price? Before we start, there's a small matter of my fee. I don't have caps. Is, is that a fusion core? You don't see those around much anymore, do you? But if you do want to survive, not a bad trade. But what's to stop him? You should you should do the thing with the foot first before giving the fusion core. Yeah, this is uh, not a great way to handle this situation. I bet this was the guy that put the spikes in the boot mm -hmm. in the very first episode. I must warn you, the taste, not great. Just give it! Would it repair his foot? What's the result? The results. Holy moly. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, thank you. Sure thing, buddy boy. Uh oh, something, something bad's gonna happen, isn't it? You know where I can find a radio tower? It's near a town that used to be called Shady Sand. This is radioactive as hell. You don't have to worry about that anymore, do you, buddy boy? Toodles. What a fun encounter. You have to Do you worry think about it's that gonna... anymore? Do we just turn him into a ghoul? Yeah, I feel like it's just going to keep amplifying in his system some way. God, I love this show. A phenomenon about that. What? A... Ah. Oh, prison. Back to the vault. That was a really fascinating shot. Twenty-four. They already added the Vault Thirty-Three outfit to the uh, Fallout Shelter mobile game. Um. I got mine. I feel like he might end up recruiting them. In preparation for repopulating our neighboring Vault 32, Overseer Betty will be sending out vault assignments later today. Remember, wherever you end up, that's where you belong. Seems like a good way to quell a resistance. But could he bring order to them? Doesn't seem like Not order, but he can bring chaos. I feel like you need to find the, whoever might be the leader in that group. What? Uh-oh. There's a disease going poison. around here. Or a poison. The medic says it looks like rat poison. I wish it would end. What did I tell you, Norman? Words have meaning. People are going to be upset when they hear about this. What does she mean by words have meaning? People like to have something to fuss about. It's just a distraction. It wasn't him. <laughs> She's behind it. I mean, yeah. It's interesting they're cluing us in on this. Like breaking perspective and showing us tidbits. <laughs> Are they separating them? Nah. How peculiar. Oh, hi, Nor. It's just terrible about the Raiders, isn't it? <laughs> Don't be too long. I'm holding the baby, so you have to pack everything. We'll miss you, Norm. Way to reel that man in. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to? Yeah. Steph and I were given a starter home unit. So you're just going to forget about everything we've seen. I feel like this is a good moment for a fresh start. Can I live in a little murder house? You're a coward. You know that shit? What a terrifying situation. Living with someone from 31. Sure. We all are, Norm. Live in so a vault. We live in a vault. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, boy. 
I think the character development here is really interesting. Why? I really thought we were just going to leave this character behind and maybe at the end of the show come back. But I love that we've stayed in the vault. We follow this narrative. And I think we're going to get something interesting by the very end. I think we already have got something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like he's more save a, the dog. I feel like he's more of a constant of the kind of acceptance and deniability that we live in life. Is that that representation? Sure. Or yeah. he's going to grow up and save the... <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Boy can dream. Uh, I'm so glad he's going to save dog meat. Oh, my heart. The dog is such a good thread. Yeah. Go find your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, he can hunt the scent. Ah, oh, yay! Flashback. Love these flashbacks. I know. I get so immersed. I could watch a whole about prequel series. Yeah. Don't do it. I've got three hot cocos on deck. Two marshmallow, one plain. Three. You have one for me. I'll be out there in just a minute. He's going to tell all the secrets to our daughter. I got to listen. He'll be out in a minute. He'll be back there. Puppy. What's the puppy's name? Parallels. You know where I was about? What are you thinking? I'll put it in the trash. Throw it in the fireplace. <laughs> no dogs in the vault, huh? This is love of dogs really going to be the thing. <laughs> mm. I mean, motivate me. I get it. No, same. Could have saved the world. Oh, he's back at Hollywood forever. I'm sorry, dog meat, but you ain't him. Officially called him dog meat. <laughs> it's canon. I love it. I love the ghoul story of the search for identity, playing an actor where you're posing as heroes, and then mm. what purpose do you really serve in the real world, you know? Yeah, my uh, ride should be getting here any minute. Thanks again for letting me use your radio. That was really nice. Hey, <laughs> Fred Armisen. So you're saying earlier that some people, they don't uh, like the sound of this music? What <laughs> a perfect cameo. These are the original recordings. You can't get that warm sound anymore. You know, the bass, the treble. <laughs> oh. Here. Oh, that, okay. <laughs> it's really got that yeah. thing on it. Well, it's not on it, it's in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some people, they're just so ignorant to music. It's kind of sad, I would say. This guy's a great bullshitter. Great job on these traps, by the way. Really good. Jeez. People just uh, can't be nice. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Is he just firing aimlessly? They're blinks. I just God, missed every shot. Of <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even look like you were aiming at them. Who are you? I'm the person who got it off. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. But the thing, he was, in fact, uh, he's got ghoul juice or whatever. That's true. Uh, yeah. Why am I not dead? That's a question. I, I wouldn't do that. Well, I'm not just going to leave it there. Oh, that's what you... Mm. Oh. Rapid healing. Sick. It's sick to see if you have Wolverine claws. I, I think you might be a ghoul. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. I should have never trusted a doctor that smelled like that. <laughs> that was such a great reaction. The Brotherhood. Shit. You got a whole ass, man. They'll kill me if they find out. What? The Brotherhood is a good guy? Nah, if you're a ghoul. Complicated organization. <laughs> It's the most honest thing he's said so far. I'll slow them down. You'll have time to run. I'm sorry about a lot of things. I, and it didn't mean for... Okay, and, uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> you shouldn't be likable, but this he's really serious is like so him. funny. <laughs> he's so... He's, he's the last character I expected to really like. What are you doing? If they want a head, I'm going to give them a head. Find your dad. Go home. That's where I want for no. you. It's good that they were in this graveyard. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. You trust me. Love this. I'd say you're worthy. 
Aww, the smile. <laughs> you still go? Are we Fred Armisen? I'll wait for you. Okay. Fall 33. Find me. I hope you don't die this season, Maximus. Uh, he's in a precarious situation. He's got a lot of explaining to do. Yeah. Titus, the armor. Yep. Wouldn't want to be in that position. Hope he has high charisma. Which he does not. <laughs> we say goodbye to all those who are leaving us for Vault 32. Uh-huh. I'm not going. Every I'm not going. vault. I'm not going. I'm not, I'm, um, I live. I live there. Wow, they get no choice in the matter, huh? Sorry, that was weird. We are proud to announce as interim overseer of Vault 32, Stephanie Harper. Good luck, 32ers. Hit it. <laughs> A sound that will never get old. It's crazy in this switch that they still, they intentionally keep the doors closed and no one questions it. I mean, you're born in the vault. You live in the vault, you die in the vault. Yeah, but it's it's like there's people migrating from Vault 33 to 32, and yet they won't. No one questions why we can, they can't just keep the doors open and I share. mean, people move from America to Mexico, and but it's right next keep, door. We it's, keep it's, it. It's, it's right. literally the country's right <laughs> next door, but this we got a, this is a, a door. big fence. This is a door. <laughs> well, we got a, a a door between the fence, Greg. It's borders. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Ah, oh, sick. All right, let's see if I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the hardest things to do. That was fast. Leave. Right now. Right now. Oh, shit. What are they going to do to 33 with the compromise? Gonna do you know think it's that you, was Betty? Betty? Do you think Betty was aware of this message? I think Betty was aware of this message. I, do, I, I just... What are the likelihood of the overseer being at their computer at the exact time that... I don't know. I don't even know if there's a person in charge over there. I wonder if it's a computer. You're not even doing a Betty impersonation. It's me, Betty. On this week's episode of Catfish. <laughs> what if it's his mom? Good theory. It's either his mom or a robot. One's a tad more emotionally impactful. I hope this episode never ends. I know the editors disagree, but... <laughs> Damn, they really build that shit? It's great. Crazy vaults like this exist, like, across the country. Can we buy one? Yeah. Get it installed? Hello? Hello there. Oh, shit. I thought the episode was over. Hello? Mom? Oh, boy. Hey, it's mirroring the shot of our ghoul from earlier. Ah, huh, maybe it is a machine. No one did greet him. You were right. Or. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate going back to the fiddle. Wow, there's really only one left? Fuck. <laughs> Shout out to Astapro for sponsoring us. So some fun facts about me. I've been seeing an ENT the past couple of months. Got a CT scan done for my allergies, and right now I'm trying to find time to get deviated septum surgery. So like many of you, I am someone who's tried pretty much every nasal spray you can think of because I have difficulty breathing through my nose, which leads to day-to-day -day and sleeping problems on a consistent basis. So before agreeing to this, I wanted to try them out myself because this is a serious thing I deal with. They provided me with free samples. This is my second bottle. This is without a doubt the best nasal 
nasal spray I have ever used. That's not some talking point. That's my very own personal testimony. Genuinely, for me, it's fantastic and lives up to how it's advertised. It's the fastest 24-hour over-the-counter solution available. It gets to work in just 30 minutes while other sprays take hours to kick in. It's also the only one out there that's steroid-free for 24-hour relief. Astapro has seriously changed the game for me, offering full prescription strength relief from nasal congestion, runny nose, and sneezing. The difference this makes is phenomenal. It's kind of insane how this relief through my breathing and nostrils just kicks in and I'm back in action really fast. So if you're like me, battling with nasal allergies and looking for relief, get fast-acting nasal allergy or symptom relief with Astapro. Go to astaproallergy.com for a discount so you can Astapro and go. It's faster with Astapro, bro. I saw that commercial. <laughs> Astapro, it's faster, bro. That's A-S-T-E-P-R-O allergy.com. Remember, use as directed for relief of nasal congestion, runny nose, sneezing, and itchy nose due to allergies. Thank you again, Astapro, sincerely. Man, I love this show, Greg. I love it too. Man, it it it's just Fallout is so good at being so many things at once. You keep crediting Fallout and not really the creatives behind the show. You well, just saying I, Fallout. Well, no, and, and and full credit to the creatives behind the show, specifically Greg. Uh, not specifically Greg. Greg had nothing to do with the creative behind the show. You don't know that. I know who that you, definitively. You have no idea who, what I do when you're not around. Who directed this episode? Uh, I think it said Frederick Douglass. And <laughs> Frederick Douglass, <laughs> the civil rights activist? Yeah, and, uh, like the yeah, Frederick Douglass? Catherine Keener or something. Okay. Well, <laughs> Frederick Douglass came back from the yeah, man. weird thing for Frederick Douglass, civil he's, rights he's activist. Got that special, uh, he's got that special juice keeping him around. Frederick Douglass <laughs> Frederick is a ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> that feels offensive, so I'm going to tread lightly on it's that not, subject. It's not, it's not offensive. Uh, no, I... Uh, I think they have just somehow managed to capture the lightning of Fallout in a bottle and have done such a agree, yeah. a perfect job at bringing it to life in a way that feels like so new and refreshing. And I just I love that like every time that I think I've got something figured out, they totally upend it and they do it in the most wonderful unexpected ways. Sure. Like when we're in this like vault experiment thing, I get like this whole like cockamamie cons conspiracy in my head about where we're going. And then they just, no, we're going to take it in a completely different direction. And it pays off in this like weird, fun, hysterical way that still moves the plot forward, but in an unexpected way. Uh, and that challenges the morals of the characters and that puts them on these kind of interesting, you know, almost like, like any great you know, role playing series has these like interesting moral quandaries that challenge the characters continuously. Uh, and I just, it's, it's so freaking fun. And I, I think there's so many different dimensions in the fact that we're hopping between so many POVs. And I literally, there's not a single POV that I'm like, God damn this one again. Like I'm jazzed to be with any of these characters for any amount of time. Now, do I have favorites? Absolutely. Like I, I wish we had more flashbacks like, I would love to spend more time in the pre-war drama just because I find it so fascinating. I would also love to just spend more time. Uh, I think, like, Lucy is just such a great protagonist. I think they really knocked her out of the park in particular. And the ghoul is such a compelling character. Um, you know, but I, I just, across the board, the show has just been, it's just been a fun ride. And as a Fallout fan... I'm like contextually trying to put the clues together about like, like this was a good, they gave a good little tease because there was that minute when you had the two guys in the father and the son in the new California Republic Ranger outfits where I was like, oh, uh, hell yeah. Like the NCR is like really coming back this episode. Um, and like timeline wise, I like finally mentally figured it out in my brain. So this takes place after all the current games. So we really don't know anything about like where the new California Republic is at. And I think that's really, really interesting in that like they've really, they have a, a genuine blank canvas. Uh, and I think it's, it's fun like for, for a, uh, a fan that's really into the lore and exploring all of that. There's been so much for me to like dive back into and to like go back and like, I've been like a couple hours earlier, just like deep diving into like 
oh yeah, like back in like Fallout One and Two, like you literally are like there at the founding of like Shady Sands, and like you see how this like little village and the actions of your character like plays an essential role in creating this city that ultimately ends up becoming the sprawling government. And I just think it's so cool that they've managed to like tie something back from the very beginning of this Fallout uh, experience and universe into something that is like now, you know, a hundred years later uh, and in this whole new medium, uh, just, it's just freaking amazing. And I'm just having so much fun. And it's, it's honestly more than anything, it's so fun experiencing it with you as somebody that is new to the universe uh, and just like watching your excitement and seeing how you react to so many of like the fallout isms. Um, And also just like, it's an inherently cinematic world, right? Like, um, and it's, it's amazing to watch it adapted to screen and it's amazing to see how you are taking it in. And there's like one of the big complaints I think about fallout is that it has up until fallout 76 anyway, which has a lot of mixed feelings about it uh, has always been like a single player game. And so it's a very solitary experience, even though it's universally beloved by fans it's not something that you ever get to enjoy with somebody else. Mm-hmm. And so that's been really kind of fun to be able to experience this world with somebody that I, I care about. Um, and to like be like, oh, I'm so glad that I'm not alone and finding like that weird fucking stuff, like really enjoyable. And like knowing that that like odd sense of humor that it like really finds its like its happy place on and the strange juxta- juxtaposition of like humor and genre bending. Uh, just it's like so validating and so enjoyable. But enough me, Greg. What did you think of this episode? <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was another really solid episode. I'm who's the guy uh, who the, the guy with the messed up foot who's now a ghoul? Uh, uh, Thaddeus. Thaddeus. Uh, the way this show can take characters that initially I'm, I I kind of write off at first. Go, I'm not too interested in what they're going to be doing with this guy. And then they manage to make them really interesting. Yeah, a yeah. lot of that does come down to good casting, but also there's there's a certain kind of pitch for the writing that you do have to find uh, for these characters because everyone has to be on the same note about the world that they inhabit. And I feel sure, like this sure. is the kind of show where maybe it is the game where they all have the time to get to know what the tone of it is. What impresses me most about the casting here. And the direction overall is that the reason why I think we can cut around to so many characters and characters who are in a variety of different types of personas, mm. but still constantly flows is everyone still feels like they're a part of the same show. They're all part mm. of the same world. Well it, and a lot of the same, like, like he had like certain kind of reactions when he was in that Fred Armisen scene. And I'm like, and the, in this world, this reaction from this guy to how he's responding to these revelations <laughs> makes the, so much sense. <laughs> sure, sure. And <laughs> you have to be on the right because I'm like, oh, I'm just kind of like hearing the script, and I'm going, and I'm imagining someone who's going like so dramatic or so heavy, yeah. or or playing too much into comedy. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and but everyone in that scene, they all have the right tone, and and I think. That is probably the hardest thing this show had to get down. Yeah. And I feel like this this is one of those episodes that really demonstrates that because you need to have this great middle ground where you can go to the past. Like I love those flashbacks. And yeah. it's interesting with our ghoul. What I love what I love so much about the ghoul character is yeah. he's like trapped. It, it, he's in this present moment and this journey, but he's also trapped before the uh, what, what, what's the event called when, when this all happened? When it, I mean, it's it's a hydrogen, not a hydrogen. What was <laughs> hey, it? that's my project. Yeah, no, Greg. no, what's it called? Available now on Amazon.com. <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, uh, I mean, it, it has a lot of names. To, but what are they? What are, is there? Is there a term that they have for the fifties event? Uh, well, it, it it happens. It's not like a particular. It's the day the bombs fell. Um, okay, so it's twenty seventy seven. It's the the Great War. The Whatever you want to call it. So like, yeah, we'll yeah. call it we'll call it that. Like it, yeah. he's trapped between that and the moments leading into the Great b- War. Before yeah. the Great War, right? And it's all the the whole journey of his time at the wasteland as a ghoul is not something he really ruminates on. Hmm. 
maybe if they keep Walton Goggins around, they will. I, I feel like out of any of the characters, he might be the, even though he's like kind of the scene stealer, I could also see him being the one who'll go. I hope, I hope that he does it for him. I want him to stay forever, selfishly, but... He's an amazing actor, but yeah. as a character, it seems like he should find his he's rest. Kind of tortured. Yeah. Because well, he has to... He has had so many... He's probably one of... He's the only character really alive mm -hmm. who, at least in his mind, could have perhaps actually stopped this from occurring. Yeah. And that's which, probably like, a that's part a, of the torture, yeah. Yeah, it's a hefty weight. Not to mention losing your wife, presumably daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's still the question mark of of the woman that he's looking for. If it's not, you know, I because that was, I don't know how they phrased the language there in in the previous episode has me wondering if he's looking for someone else or holding out hope. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, we'll probably find out in this which would be kind of interesting because if his daughter is a ghoul and survived as well, she is still a kid. Um, at least in a physical form, uh, no, even though she's grown up uh, mentally. That'd be interesting. But I, I think yeah. uh, loose, the, the whole story in the Vault 4, mm. clarify that with me a, a tiny bit. Yeah. Of what they were saying with it when it came to Chris Parnell. Yeah. So uh, basically in the Vault 4 situation, originally the the scientists that were there decided to start running experiments on an assortment of test subjects. So the monsters that we're seeing are originally humans. Were all originally humans. So like even the one in the water, as I showed mm -hmm. here, was originally Those were human. just original, just normal people that were turned into all different sorts of creatures. Those creatures... For what purpose? Just for the sake of scientists Science? <laughs> yeah. being scientists. Okay. Uh, you know, for the same reason that like Dr. Mengele and like the Third Reich did awful things. Like, in their mind, it was, like, for science. Ultimately, the experiments uh, killed the scientist and then took control of Alt 4. And then after Shady Sands fell, they let in the survivors. And so all of the people with, like, the weird physical deformities were all the descendants of the original test subjects of Vault 4. Got it. But they were under the impression that they were doing that. that they were them. still doing that themselves. Yeah. Okay, but they didn't explain the cult worshiping thing. Well, the cult worshiping thing comes from apparently at some point in Shady Sands, people started believing in this sort of cult. But that happened prior to the bombing of Shady Sands. Or whatever uh, of, explosion of, of our of our woman who encountered our ghoul, <laughs> <laughs> yes, who has a name, Greg, which is Rosemary. Nope, Michelle. <laughs> nope. Um, uh, 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 Amar. <laughs> You're getting warmer. <laughs> what is it? And that is a Fallout character name. <laughs> What's her name? I don't know. <laughs> Dang it! Uh, but <laughs> I Comment her. in the section I below. So okay, so when they're like worshiping her at the altar there at the very end, I mean, I, no, at the end of last yeah. episode, is she? Did they view her as like some type of liberator of sorts? I'm trying to put that mystery together myself because that kind of seems like what her intention I, was in in the first all, episode. All, all I know is that she is not a figure that I am previously familiar with from the Fallout universe, and she definitely did not exist, at least to my knowledge, in the New California Republic at least in the last time that we were there in Fallout New Vegas. Um, mm. So part of me is kind of curious if she maybe had something to do with it going. I'm wondering if the over, I feel like she's very anti-Vault, and I think the overseers, um, my theory is that these overseers have the longevity lifespan that she has. I, you know, there's a lot of different ways that this could go down. Um, but there's one way to find out, and that's for us to watch the very final episode. And how? What did y'all think of this episode? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed our reaction. And uh, do us a favor. And uh, if you want to be aware if there's any impending atom or nukes or hydrogen bombs on the way, hit that notification bell. We'll be sure to tell you. We will react to it in real time. 
Greg, do you want to show them what our reaction would be if one goes off? Whoa. And that, that'd probably be that. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> I like that. It's crazy. <laughs> I never seen anything like that. Uh. <laughs> Do you think we can upload faster? <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll see you on the next one. Chris, Chris Wamoff. Wamoff. Christopher, listen up, buddy. I saw that you showed up in Greg and Coy's recent oh, he live did. stream. No, he didn't show up yours. And thank God he didn't, because really, it's way too much pressure when you come around, man. All right? I try to live up to your example each and every day, and yet, and yet, and yet, you know, I feel like if I was actually in your presence, even from just across the internet in a live stream scenario, I would be flustered. I would be flummoxed. I would be all of a... Of a, of a tizzy, just trying to figure out, you know, oh my goodness, you know, is there something I can do to help Chris? Because Chris, all you do is just show up and help us. I just noticed he only contributes, pretty much mainly contributes the big bucks when I'm around. You know, that is something I've just uh, had to come to grips with, I'm all right? I'm starting my to wonder precious, why it doesn't really happen when I'm not in the live stream. Worth that much. Trying to wonder why this doesn't happen it's when I'm not I am there. going to the gym again, Chris. Is because uh, now I want to be worth hilarious. your love, uh, no matter how much you know pleasing and, and you know betrayal of my own personal self I have to do to get there. Even though fitness generally is a good idea, and I'm sure you have a good fitness regimen, which I would be embarrassed about myself to see upon Perhaps. beholding your beautiful, gorgeous body. So, Chris, keep on staying away from me, and uh, keep on keeping on supporting. The G train, because it's the only train worth riding, let me tell you. That's the word around here. <laughs> Love you, Chris. Stay sexy.